everyone, and welcome back to the Future Weather Channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a big severe weather event that could even be a severe weather outbreak or even a localized tornado outbreak, particularly for portions of the central and southern plain states, eastern Rockies, and through the Ozarks as well. But this can also continue through the Ohio Valley into the northeastern states as well. So we're just going to be talking about what these storms are going to look like and also what time you can expect them in your area. Before we hop into the video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe to Phantom Weather Channel if you guys want to get weather-related video and hazardous weather live streams. Be sure to drop a like on the video and share this video out on social media if you guys like other people to see this as well. Well, let's hop right into it here. We're taking a look at our day one categorical outlook for severe weather, which as you can see, we have a widespread moderate risk of severe weather here in portions of the central plain states and portions of far northeastern Colorado as well. This is where widespread severe storms are likely, and this could definitely signal a severe weather outbreak in some scenarios here. Throughout this risk area, we are expecting a widespread threat of significant damaging winds and hail and also several tornadoes, some of which could be significant. So breaking down our individual outlooks here, um, you can see that in this red hat shade here, this is where we have a 15 to 30% chance of seeing a significant tornado, which means an EF2 to EF5 tornado within 25 miles of any one point here. We see this throughout portions of northwestern Kansas uh, and southern Nebraska as well, but throughout this entire hatched area here, there's a chance of seeing significant tornadoes. We have another area there in the northeastern states where, uh, as well where an isolated tornado or two could be possible, but really it looks like uh, northwestern or just western Kansas uh, and southern Nebraska, maybe even northeastern Colorado as well will be our biggest threat of seeing some tornadic activity today. Breaking down our hail outlook, you can see here in this uh, purple shade, this is where we have a 45 to 60 percent chance of seeing a widespread significant hail of over two inches in diameter within 25 miles of any one point. Again, this will be throughout most of our moderate risk area here, just not including the eastern extent of it here. So widespread significant hail of over two inches in diameter could be possible and could cause widespread damage. And breaking down our damaging wind outlook here, here you'll You'll notice that in the northeast, it's our most widespread risk here. We're throughout uh, all of our slight risk area here in the northeast. Uh, there is a chance of seeing some scattered damaging winds. But in our main event here, uh, in this purple area, this is where we're seeing a 45 to 60 percent chance of seeing some significant damaging winds of over hurricane force or 75 miles an hour uh, within 25 miles of any one point. And this will continue throughout this entire hatched area, uh, continuing into our 30 percent risk area as well. So widespread severe weather is very likely today uh, throughout our moderate risk area. So breaking down what our severe weather is going to look like today, um, taking this to 3 p.m. Central Time, we're going to see widespread temperatures that are going to be in the upper 80s and 90s throughout where these storms are going to initiate. And combined with the strong dew points, this is going to be very favorable for severe weather to occur out ahead of the advancing storms. Just taking taking this along here, you notice in the beginning of this period, discrete supercells will be very likely. Discrete storms just kind of mean that they're off on their own. They're just kind of cells that are off on their own. And if they mix in with an area of strong shear and high instability, there is a good chance that those storms could become supercells and discrete supercells are very likely throughout a good majority of the day here. Our biggest tornado threat is going to be from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. Central Time here uh, throughout our uh, our area here where numerous significant tornadoes could be possible. But uh, you'll notice that these storms become a little bit more organized on the northern extent of the risk area as we get into the evening and overnight hours. But these storms could remain severe into the morning hours tomorrow. So even after dark, uh, you guys are really going to be want to be on the lookout for the potential of some severe weather. Breaking down our CAPE, CAPE stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. If you see over a thousand CAPE, which is indicated by these blues, uh, just to break it down, CAPE is basically just uh, an estimate of how high the instability is in the atmosphere. And if you see over a thousand CAPE, there is enough instability typically for severe weather to occur here. And where these storms are going to initiate, again, this is by 3 p.m. Central here, we are seeing some extreme CAPE values that are going to be over 4,000, even over 5,000 in some scenarios here. So as these storms move along and even uh, where the storms are initiating, it's surrounded by a widespread area of very high instability. This is very strong heating and there is a very good chance that these storms could, be, uh, could become severe because of this year. So they'll just kind of eat up this energy as they move through the evening and to the overnight hours. You can see kind of where that line's forming there in central Kansas between no cape and very high cape values. This is where the storms are actually initiating and uh, it'll just kind of eat up that energy and it'll get a little bit weaker as we get into the morning hours, but still I think really into tomorrow morning, we can see severe weather throughout this time period. So breaking down our bulk shear, uh, zero six kilometers above the ground level here, this is crucial. Um, 
In determining supercell formation, typically if you see over 45 knots, which is indicated by these pinks mixing in with discrete storms that are in an area of high instability, there is a good chance that those storms could become supercells. Uh, and there will be some high shear of well over that mixing in with these discrete storms that, again, will likely be discrete supercells, especially as we get into the evening hours here in uh, in uh, west central Kansas especially. The shear will just keep getting stronger, though, throughout the evening hours where these storms could be, uh, potentially become supercells. It also... Uh, Again, contains some widespread wind damage, especially in portions of southeastern Nebraska as well. So that will continue along and remain favorable for severe weather throughout the overnight hours. And breaking down our significant tornado parameter, or STP, which we've been rarely doing in these videos here. We typically only do them on higher end uh, risk days like today for tornadoes. Uh, but they said that about 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. Central Time was going to be the highest uh, the highest time frame that severe weather or that uh, tornadoes were going to be likely here, where several tornadoes could be possible and some strong tornadoes could mix in with that. So typically if you see over one, which is again indicated by these blues and above here, just like Cape, same color coding, um, mixing in with an area of storms, there is uh, good ingredients in the atmosphere for some significant tornadoes to occur. But if you see anything higher than that, again, just like Cape, uh, mixing in especially with discrete storms, there is a good chance that those storms could become pot potentially significant tornado producing storms here. So even though the, these ingredients may not line up perfectly with the storms, at least initially it's, pr it's uh, pretty likely that they will, especially throughout western Kansas. Uh, so I do think that significant tornadoes are very likely, unfortunately, throughout the evening hours um, into the overnight hours as well. These STP values start to get off the charts in portions of south central Kansas and north central Oklahoma as we get later into the evening hours and after the sun sets even. A actually, as we get into about 11 p.m. central, which is when they said the end of the uh, height of the significant tornado activity would likely be, we're going to see these, Cape or these uh, STP values that are really going to be off the charts here in south central Kansas and north central Oklahoma again. Uh, but throughout our main tornado risk area, initially it's definitely more likely it looks like that those storms could become significant tornado uh, producing storms here. So you guys are really going to want to be on the lookout for that. And then breaking down what our storms are going to look like in the mid-Atlantic through the northeast here where our slight risk area is, you'll just notice that these storms just kind of move along here. Uh, we don't expect anything major to happen with this. So we're not going to break it down too much, uh, but it does look like still uh, throughout now into the evening hours, there's a chance of some um severe weather occurring here. So out ahead of the advancing storms, there will be some high Cape values, uh, which likely will yield enough instability for that severe weather to occur. And our shear at times throughout the throughout the uh, storm's life cycle here uh, is going to be favorable of maybe some supercell activity to occur. Again, maybe some uh, isolated to scatter severe hail, and maybe an isolated tornado or two will be possible, but damaging winds looks to be our biggest hazard. So breaking down our day two categorical outlook for severe weather, as you can see, we have a widespread and Enhanced risk of severe weather. This means that numerous severe storms are going to be possible. An overall threat of severe weather is likely. We had this yesterday as well, and this extends throughout uh, northern Texas into southeastern, or sorry, southwestern Illinois. So widespread severe weather could be possible again tomorrow through tomorrow night. And breaking down our tornado outlook here, in this yellow shade, which actually since the last outlook was posted, also extends into far southwestern Missouri and far northwestern Arkansas. This is where we have a 10 to 15 percent chance of seeing a tornado touchdown within 25 miles miles of a given location throughout this bronze shade though we also have a five percent chance of seeing that within 25 miles of any one point um uh, but throughout this entire risk area here, including this green shade, there is at least some chance that a tornado could touch down tomorrow and tomorrow night. Breaking down our severe hail outlook on the western or northern extent of our uh, enhanced risk area here, there's not only a chance of seeing some widespread severe hail, but in this hatched area, this is where we have a chance of seeing some widespread significant severe hail of over two inches in diameter. And throughout the majority of our um, enhanced risk area here, uh, we have a threat of seeing some widespread damaging winds. And again, throughout this hatched area, this is where we have a chance of seeing some hurt hurricane force winds of over 75 miles per hour, a 30% chance of that within 25 miles of one of uh, any one point in this red uh, hatched area here. So breaking down what these storms are going to look like, again, throughout the uh, morning hours into the midday hours, there could be some severe weather activity for sure throughout the uh, eastern Ozark into the Ohio Valley that could occur, uh, but it looks like throughout the, um, the mid to late afternoon hours and then eventually through the overnight hours as well, uh, there's probably a bigger threat of severe weather just in terms of the squall line that will 
form. So by 3 p.m. Central tomorrow, our temperatures are going to be widespread over 80 degrees and still over 90 uh, where these storms are going to initiate here. Also combined with very strong dew points of over 70 and up to 80, this will yield uh, so for some pretty good ingredients for the, some severe weather to occur. As these storms move along here, you'll see a gnarly squall line that is going to start to form by the time they're reaching about 9 p.m. Central tomorrow. Uh, so a lot of this activity that could contain damaging winds could occur after dark and not to mention the flash flooding as well. So we'll break that down later on throughout the video. But these storms will just move southeastward. Um, and overall, it could be an active day for severe weather again. And maybe even tomorrow morning into the midday. But again, it looks like mid to late afternoon through the overnight hours. There's probably a higher threat of it. Breaking down our cape here. Again, very, very high cape values. Of nearly exceeding off the charts. Extreme uh, instability will be possible over northwestern Texas and western Oklahoma here. But just out ahead of the advancing storms, it's still going to be very strong to significant Cape values here uh, throughout the entire way. But as the overnight hours do go on, on uh, some of this energy gets eight and up, it's kind of going to be more low end Cape for severe weather to occur, which is why I do think that by the time that we're reaching the morning hours on Friday, there's probably a good chance that those storms uh, could die out quite a bit there. Um, but our bulk shear, again, zero to six kilometers above ground level, uh, could also be favorable of some supercells to occur. And again, it looks like some tornadoes are definitely going to be possible with a corridor of numerous tornadoes possible throughout northeastern Oklahoma into southwestern Missouri. But just throughout the course of the storm's life cycle, uh, this shear will remain pretty favorable of some severe weather to occur, including damaging winds. And that would bring us into our day three categorical outlook for severe weather, which we're not going to break down too much because it is currently only a uh, widespread marginal risk of what we We've seen stuff like this evolve into much higher in the past, so I'm certainly not counting it out. Uh, but throughout eastern New Mexico into the uh, Del Marva area here, there is a good chance, or at least, or at least a widespread area where there could be some isolated severe weather here. Another small area where that could be possible in southeastern Montana and northeastern Wyoming. Uh, so we could maybe still be looking at some severe weather on Friday and Friday night. Let's take a look at what these storms are going to look like over the course of time here. Throughout the uh, throughout into the weekend, we could see some widespread heavy rain rainfall uh, for portions of the Great Lakes states into the, nor the northern plains, really throughout most of the plains here, even into the uh, the uh, the east coast as well. We could be looking at some heavy rainfall, maybe even the uh, northern Gulf states as well, where another brief system starts to fire up on uh, Saturday here. So overall, this will bring some widespread heavy rainfall. And this is our GFS model. Again, so there could be some differences in model guidance here. But if, when we're seeing these golds here, especially for northern Texas, this is where we're looking at over four inches of rainfall. In these reds, we're expecting over two inches of rainfall. And in these pinks, we're expecting at least over an inch of rainfall here. Also, uh, typically anything over an inch in a short time period is pretty favorable that you could be maybe looking at at least some localized flash flooding. Um, so I think that there's a pretty good chance that we could be looking at some heavy rainfall, at least throughout these pink shades here. But be on the lookout if you are expected to have uh, any rainfall of this kind here. So we could maybe have some flash flooding. Take a look at our excessive rainfall outlooks here. Here would be our excessive rainfall outlook for today day and tonight, which as you can see, we have a slight risk of excessive rainfall here. Um, in the northern Ozarks and the central plains as well, where some scattered flash flooding could be possible. Tomorrow, we have a wider area here in uh, the eastern plains states through the Ozarks into the Ohio Valley as well, where some scattered flash flooding could be possible. And again, on Friday and Friday night, we're uh, two separate areas where some isolated flash flooding could be possible. One in the southern plains in the northern Gulf states, another one in the Tennessee and Ohio valleys into the uh, mid-Atlantic states as well. And I do think that we will see more excessive rainfall outlooks get posted the further that we get into this event event occurring. Uh, so that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it and you want to see more of my videos, be sure to subscribe to Phantom Weather Channel. I would be live streaming today for the event that is occurring, uh, but unfortunately I can't. Uh, so be sure to drop a like on the video and share this video out if you guys want other people to see this as well. And if you want to get severe weather uh, videos and severe weather coverage. But until the next video, stay safe and I will talk to you guys back here in the next video.